All right, so what food business is most profitable? So in this video, which is number seven in a series of 10 videos, I'm gonna be uploading, showing you low investment food businesses and how to get them up and running, what it is exactly that you need and what these products are. If you want to get into the food entrepreneurship and you're not sure what to do about it, but you're looking for ridiculously high profitable food products, this is a number one, seven in our series of 10. I'm gonna dive into how this works right now. All right, guys, so welcome back to Marketed Food Online. So in this video, as I mentioned before in the introduction, this is video seven in a series of 10 that we're actually going to make and upload all here on YouTube, giving you very basic and simple food uh, businesses that you can actually get up and running for a low investment. Some of these are even less than $1,000. A few of them are even less than 500, and they are legitimate food businesses that have ridiculously high profitable food products and the most most of these are actually extremely simple and easy to make. Some of these you can actually do with your hands tied behind your back and your eyes closed. Um, so in this one in particular, we're gonna dive into a product. Now you may or may not have heard of this. It is actually something that I had never heard of before because I've actually never seen this at a festival or a farmer's market before. But when I heard about this product, I thought, well, the fact that it has 87% profit might be a good idea to put it in our video series and they're called Fudge puppies actually fudge puppies now that has nothing to do with pouring fudge on actual dogs it is a product that has made of a waffle stick there it is right there we pop it up that's the image of how it looks but they're actually like waffles on a stick similar to our other other video that we did but these in particular are actually dipped in a certain type of chocolate coating and they're actually coated with a fudge chocolate on top and then a variety of toppings that you can of course add to it so it makes it even a, a richer and sugary and more uh uh, delicious than other just plain old waffle on a stick items. So let's dive into what it is specifically that you'll need to get up and running. And then I'm gonna go over these numbers right here and show you exactly how much profit you can actually make on each unit and then set some goals for yourself to sell a certain amount of units per day. And we'll get into that too right about there. Okay, so number one, the thing that you'll need right off the bat, and I, by the way, these are gonna be entry level like all of our videos. I'm showing you price points for these pieces of equipment that you can do this on a budget. You don't need to dump five, 10, 15, or $20,000 into this, this idea. You can get entry level basic pieces of equipment, turn over your profit, put some money in your pocket, and of course you can get bigger, better, or even more additional commercial style equipment, which might be a little bit bigger, a little bit larger, but can put out more product. So as your business grows, you can do that. But I wanted to bring this series to you on a budget. I know that a lot of you that are watching this are looking to create a side hustle or a side business. So you probably don't have a lot to budget for these types of businesses. That's the reason why I'm showing you these. This one in particular is the fudge maker, the waffle fudge maker itself, which is similar to the actual waffle stick maker. Um, it's gonna be around $232. And of course, as I do in all my videos down below, there'll be a link to our blog. Uh, that'll take you over to our website and show you all the additional products so you can just click on them. It takes you right over to exactly what I'm talking about here so you can see them. Okay, so this waffle maker is actually $232. Very simple, it's more or less plug it in, turn it on, let it warm up, and then you pour the batter into it and you're done, okay? So you've got your maker, you've got number two, the warmer. So this is gonna be the fudge warmer. This is gonna be like a reservoir, a canister, if you will, a dish that's going to warm the fudge that you're going to dunk these in particularly. And then once you take it out, it begins to actually set up and harden. And then that way you can add sprinkles or toppings or any additional things. And by the way, if you want to offer additional toppings, that may also be another stream of revenue. You could sell one that's just plain or dunked in the fudge or you can do one with different toppings and then charge a little bit more for that, maybe a dollar or two or an extra dollar. Um, that adds up if you begin to sell a couple hundred or a thousand of these units, if you add on additional toppings. So that's optional, of course, but you're gonna need the fudge warmer. So that reservoir is around $113. Now, how do I get the fudge dip? The actual chocolate dip itself, it's five pounds in a bag. They come in either little briquettes or little chocolate chips and they melt down. That gives a five pound bag for around $27. And again, these are gonna be averages. You may find a better quality chocolate if you wanna do that. It may be about 50 or $60, or you may find something that's even cheaper, you know, okay? And then you, something that's even more expensive that you're just gonna make even more money with. But roughly, these are gonna be the prices of you're gonna to need to get in at an entry level, okay? Next up is the waffle mix itself. Now, this is just plain traditional waffle mix, but you don't wanna go out and buy the stuff you get in a retail store. You wanna get a commercial size bag, and that's normally gonna push you between about a five pound and maybe 10 pound bag or even bigger. Five pound bag that we found was $22. And then lastly, you're gonna need the setter sticks, they're called. These are gonna be the little sticks that you're gonna put into the waffle itself. While it's on the grate cooking, and then you pull it off, and then you can dunk it, and you're done. 
you get 100 sticks for around 10 bucks. So your total startup for this roughly, okay, on a low end is gonna be $404, okay? So now let's dive into specifically what the cost per unit of each of these is gonna be so you can understand how much profit you can make on each unit. Number one, the mix, you're gonna roughly get around 17 cents. The stick itself is gonna be around $2 and the dip roughly again about 13 cents. It's a little bit tricky to measure the dipping part because if you coat it in the fudge, you know, depending upon how much actually goes on the waffle itself, you're gonna get a ballpark of around 32 cents per unit as your cost. That is ridiculously cheap. So let me show you how we get 87% profit on this. So if you retail it out roughly at around 250 and it costs you 32 cents, you're gonna get a $2.18 on each unit for yourself. Now, in this right here, we're gonna take over to this section. And I'm gonna show you how much you can make in a day and three days. Normally, a lot of these events that I talk about here on Marketing Food Online, are gonna be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, normally like a weekend or three-day event. Um, if you get something that's even longer, well then of course you're obviously gonna be making more money. But if you do about 200 units a day and you're putting $2.18 in your pocket, that's $436 in a day with just 200 units. And like I say in every single video of mine, don't think that 200 is some outrageous number because it's not. Just think, again, as my example, if you have a family of four and each person in that family gets them, then you're talking about 50 transactions. If you're going to an event and you've got 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, or 4,000, or however many you have coming to that specific event, but it's in the thousands, if you can't make 50 transactions, then you probably actually shouldn't start this business. But 50 transactions at four uh, units per transaction would easily get you 436 bucks. So if you're doing it on a third, three day uh, span of time between Friday and Sunday, then you're talking about 1,308 bucks profit for yourself. Now, Damien, I know these events are obviously not free, so there's gotta be some fees involved with it. Well, you're right, but they're very minuscule, very small in comparison to how much you're making. So a lot of times, as I mentioned before in my other videos, there's only two ways that they'll charge you for this type of, of fee for the actual event. A flat fee, as it's known, or a percentage. The flat fees are normally between like $100 or $200 to get a, admission to the event itself and to sell your products. I've never heard of like a farmer's market or a local event being much more than that. If it is over 200, 200 bucks, you should probably look in a different area of town to find a different event because that's pretty expensive, especially just for a small cubicle, a little booth, and you're serving one or two different items. The other way they do it is by percentage of sales. Normally that scale is between five to 10% and the average being about seven or 8% of whatever you sell. So for every dollar that you sell in product, seven cents of that goes as a fee. Um, either way that they work it out, you're still gonna make a lot of money. Even if you're gonna get charged, let's say in the high end of 200 bucks, for three days, let's take that off of $1,308. That's still $1,100 in three days worth of work. Now, next up, the only thing that's still kind of up in the air on many of all these videos that I'm doing, of course, I can't speak on every city and county in the entire country, but some of the cities and counties will require what's known as a temporary vending license or a temporary vending permit. And that's okay. Even if they charge you a $200 fee for that specific fee, uh, permit, which is like a three-day uh, permit for the temporary event that you're going to, take off 200 off of this, again, you're still looking at about 1,108 bucks, okay? So these are fees that could potentially show up, and if they do, they're still minuscule compared to what you're doing. Now, here's a really quick side note and a great tip, as I mentioned again in my other videos, if you wanna increase your revenue over the span of a weekend or a small event in your city or county, get to, somebody else to do this with you. Get two or even three units operating at the same time. Maybe you know your brother or your, your dad or maybe a cousin or a friend of yours, you can go ahead and get these. If you wanna invest, even if it's 500 bucks and you did it twice, you put $1,000 in two of these different units, two sets of these, and you're operating them on the same weekends at different events, of course, not the same event, but in different places, you're gonna be doubling what you're gonna be making. So even if it was around 1,200 bucks, if you're doing two locations and you're talking about $2,400 in three days, okay? So these are not unrealistic numbers. You just need to understand, number one, the event that you're going to, you can always ask the one manager or the one that's in charge of that event, ask them how many people normally come to this annually. That'll give you an idea if they're saying, well, we get about 10 to 12,000 people on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, fantastic. Then you should probably check out another event and have two of these operating. If you go to an event and they say, well, the past couple of years, it's been really um, hard to get, you know, even a thousand people to come and you're looking for a really um, high traffic events, then you can do a little bit more homework, find out what other events are available and obviously go to the ones that have more people, period. Now, the one thing that's really cool about this type of a product is that it appeals to kids and adults alike. 
Unlike some of the products that we have, a lot of times certain products or foods or snack items appeal to kids only or predominantly adults. So you want to find something that's kind of in the middle of the road. And this item is something that can definitely be sold to both of them. And it's also an item that you can do year round. So if you happen to live near the, the ocean or high touristy areas that have a lot of tourist traffic, these are items that you can set up a booth literally in the hot summer, springtime, or even in the winter or fall, and you can still make money year round. Now, another great thing to think about too, food trucks. If you're a food truck entrepreneur and you're looking for something to add on to your menu that's really super simple and easy and it can be like a dessert item, then this product is only about four or 500 bucks investment in the equipment. You get that put on your truck and then you're up and running. And if you're selling hot dogs or pizza, you can then offer something sweet to go along with it. A lot of people, a lot of the events that I go to, my, my kids and my, my wife, my, my son that we've gone to some food truck events, a lot of them sell hamburgers or sandwiches and then they offer something sweet. So if it's something like this, you can just add additional revenue to your bottom line. So if you're a food truck operator, this is another great way to add more money. If you're a wannabe kind of food entrepreneur and you're not really sure or you're on the fence, you're not trying to figure out what you want to sell, then take a look at this idea. And again, our other videos that we have, we'll have links in down below in the description to the other six videos. Um, and we'll put together a playlist actually to make it easy for you. We'll put a playlist together. We'll put the link down in the description so you can just hit play and it'll start from one all the way down to the seven videos that we have. Stay tuned though over the next few more days, we'll wrap up the last three videos that we're gonna offer and they're gonna give you three more ideas to help you understand. So again, you may not be a fan of, of, of these types of products or these particular car, um, carnival items or concession foods and that's okay. You don't need to be a fan of this if it's gonna make you some money and you can do it over the next uh, year, maybe a few months or six or eight months, put away some money and save it for the product or thing that you really wanna do. Nobody's saying that you have to sell these forever in a day, but I can tell you, if you spend some time on the weekends, instead of sitting around watching television and trying to figure out what I can do to make money, try a couple of these different businesses. They're very low investment. If it works really well for you, then put some money away. If your, your goal is to open a restaurant or a food truck or even an e-commerce business selling food, then you can fund it by doing these types of businesses. So if this was helpful, definitely give us a thumbs up. And if it was super helpful, definitely appreciate everyone who gives us our super thanks. That is down below the video. If you hit the super thanks button and give us a donation, we definitely appreciate that because that again helps us keep the lights on and the videos coming. So we'll see you guys on our next video. Stay tuned. We're going to have three more in the series and I'll see you on our next video.